Hello and welcome to this video and today I thought I would compare the new Clinique 72 hour lipid replenishing hydrator to their original moisture surge 72 hour re auto replenishing hydrator. And this one came to uh, Ulta recently. I think it now is just at Sephora and it's a new addition to the moisture surge family. And to be honest, I was really thrown with it. Uh, when I got it, it just different than what I was expecting. So I thought I would do a versus of the two since some of you might be thinking about purchasing if you want to try the new version out or go to the old favorite original moisture surge uh, moisturizer. So I thought I would do a little comparison of them. Uh, so I'll talk about the similarities and differences of these. So the nice thing is both of these are free from denatured or drying types of alcohol. Uh, they're also both fragrance free. The new product is made in the UK while the original is made in the US. Uh, texture is one of the main differences. There's several differences, but the texture of these is the major difference that I noticed right off the first time I used it. So the original Moisture Surge, which a lot of people absolutely love, has kind of a nice gel texture to it. It's like kind of a gel cream texture to it. So let me... Oh, I hate these little things. I always, I always keep these little things on because I think it helps, but... So, here's the original version. You see that it's got a really nice light texture to it, which uh, is kind of has a gel texture to it. It absorbs pretty quickly. A little bit of this goes a long way. You can see I'm covering basically my entire arm with it. <laughs> a little bit goes a very long way. Absorbs nicely, sets to kind of a natural finish once it absorbs. Very nice texture. I absolutely love the texture of the original. So when the new version came out and was boasting some additional hydrating ingredients and occlusive ingredients, I thought I would uh, give it a try since I've been pretty happy with the entire Moisture Surge line from Clinique. It's pretty good for sensitive skin and dry skin as well. So the new version... You can instantly see the color is different. So the new version doesn't have the colorants that the other version has. This one also has a very thick texture to it, which you can see instantly. It's very uh, thick. So mm -hmm. a little bit of it goes not as far as the other product does. And it is very hydrating. And it takes a while to fully absorb. So it takes... Uh, little bit of time to fully absorb so uh, that was the first instant reaction I had to it was that I was really looking forward to that nice gel texture to it and the new version has a much thicker texture so um, honestly the <laughs> the original version the nice gel texture is slightly prone to pilling with certain sunscreens and some people have had issues with it peeling. So if you use it with a sunscreen, it's not the easiest. The new version, in my opinion, the texture is kind of more geared towards evening routine since it is so emollient. So you can see it's still not fully absorbed. It takes a long time to really fully absorb, whereas the original version is pretty much absorbed. So the texture, I still prefer the original version. Uh, in terms of ease of use of these, so... I will say the 72 hour thing is totally overplayed. You can't use this once, wait three days, and then apply it again. You, it, the second you rinse it off, most of the moisture is gone. So I don't know why they make the three day claim on there. 72 hours, three days, right? <laughs> Pretty close, or it is three days. Okay, so I don't know why they say that because it doesn't provide three days worth of moisture. It just does not not gonna happen, but. So they recommend uh, applying morning and evening on clean skin. Use a loner under makeup on dry skin or as a five-minute mask. Uh, in my opinion, the new version is a bit too shiny for morning use. It works much better in the evening unless your skin is very, very dry. It's going to be a little bit too emollient to use in your morning routine. Uh, the original version is also great. They mention with the original version, you can use it under or over makeup for an instant moisture boost. I haven't had good luck any time I've tried using it over makeup. So if you have, leave a comment, but I just have not had good luck 
with that. It just makes kind of a mess. So I don't know why they say that, but, um, and then they also mention you can apply this in layers. And I've noticed if you apply more than one layer, it begins pilling or peeling. So for ease of use, I would say the new version is a little bit easier just because you're, in my opinion, not trying to use your morning routine under sunscreen because it is a little bit too emollient unless you have very, very dry skin. So, okay, the fun stuff, the beneficial ingredients. And then I'll talk about the major formulation changes. So the new version, we've got uh, sodium hyaluronate. We've got olive fruit extract, which is good for skin brightening. Aloe water, Centella asiatica is new in this product. It's not in the original version. Uh, and that is a great skin soothing, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and hydrating ingredient. Uh, we've got the palm palmitol hexapeptide 12, which is a good skin conditioning ingredient. Uh, we've got bran extract, good for skin conditioning. Obviously, you've got to have caffeine in there because there's no Clinique product or Estee Lauder owned brand that doesn't have tons of caffeine in every product. Caffeine, uh, then we've got vitamin E, we've got BHT, and then hydroxyacetophenone, which are all good antioxidants. Sorbitol, sodium polyaspartate, trethalose, sucrose, which are all good humectants. Petroleum is in here, and it's not in the original version. Uh, petroleum is a very good occlusive ingredient, which helps seal everything in and prevent moisture loss. Uh, we've got whey protein, a good cell communicating ingredient. Then we've got squalane, linolylic acid, and cholesterol, all good skin identical emollients. Hydroethyl urea, which is a derivative of urea, which is a strong moisturizer and humectant uh, that helps uh, skin keep water and keeping it feeling hydrated. So uh, aside from preservatives and just the slip ingredients, I gave them, I counted 20 beneficial ingredients. Uh, now let's go to the original version, which has a lot of the same ingredients. Sucrose, trehalose, sorbitol, sodium hyaluronate, saccharide, isomeric, hydroethyl urea, saccharomyces lysate extract, and sodium polyaspartate, which are all humectants, green tea extract, ladies thistle, and birch bark, which are skin soothing antioxidants. Thermos, thermophilus ferment, uh, palmitol hexapeptide 12 are both skin conditioning ingredients, aloe water again. Uh, hydrogenated lecithin, which is a good emollient. Then we've got vitamin E and BHT, which are antioxidants. And then uh, we've also got uh, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, which is a form of vitamin C, which is good for skin brightening and also antioxidant. So I counted 18 in this. So for beneficial ingredients, the new version has a couple additional. The major changes and major non-changes, I guess, uh, of the first six ingredients in both of these, three are identical in both formulas. So the first top six ingredients, they both share three in common. They share 19 total ingredients in common, or I should say 19 total antioxidant beneficial ingredients in common. The new lipid version does not contain any artificial colorants, whereas this one does, giving it that pink color. You want to see that close up. And they're both packaged in a jar, although the new version is packaged in a glass jar, so it's at least recyclable. Sorry, guys. I don't know why I keep these on here, because the second you open it anyway, it's all downhill from there. But, okay. There we go. So you can see the artificial colorants are obviously not in the new version. Um, the lipid new ver lipid version contains the petroleum as an occlusive ingredient, whereas the gel cream original does not have petroleum in there. Some people are very sensitive to petroleum or prefer not to use petroleum in their products. So that's something to consider. Both are fragrance-free and denatured alcohol-free, although I do like the fact that the new version has a glass jar. Okay, in terms of acneogenic ingredients with the new lipid version, we've got dimethicone, isopropyl isosterate, squalane, and butylene glycol. Then with the original version, we've also got dimethicone, butylene glycol, hexylene glycol, and olefin 10. 
So technically it's kind of a tie. They both have four acnogenic ingredients. However, in the new version that isopropyl isosterate is highly comedogenic. I also question the petroleum in there, although it doesn't, it's not mentioned commonly as an acneogenic ingredient. There are some people with uh, petroleum that can have clogged pores from it. I think it's mostly because it kind of sits on the skin and sometimes is a bit suffocating. So for acneogenic ingredients, I gave the new version a little bit of a point just because the ingredients in the new version are just a little bit more acneogenic than the original. Okay, in terms of performance, so I would say if you have very dry skin that is non prone to acne and sensitive, that the new version is great. It's very hydrating. Uh, for me, it can be a bit much and using it several days in a row my skin kind of didn't like that so much so for me using it one day and then skipping a day and then using it the next day my skin handled that a bit better uh because it is very very hydrating the original version is probably more geared towards those with dryish normal skin that is not sensitive that might be slightly acne prone uh, so for performance, the new version is a bit more hydrating if that's the main factor you're looking at or if you want something very occlusive, the new version is great for that. Uh, in terms of price, so these are both 1.7 ounces and they both retail for the same, which is uh, $39.50. Although the original version has been on sale everywhere lately, so it's worth checking out. A lot of places have been doing buy one, get one, so that's well worth checking out. Uh, then in terms of the it factor... They're both decent products. I wish Clinique was cruelty free. I wish these were packaged a little bit better because the jar packaging is not great. Although, you know what? If they're going to do jar packaging, might as well do in something that's recyclable. I guess I don't know how if this is, is recyclable or not, but at least the glass version, you know, is easily recyclable. Definitely geared towards dry, sensitive, non acne prone skin. The original version is nice, geared towards normal dry skin that might be sensitive. Um, Overall, if I had to pick one, I would go with the original version just because it's a little bit, I like that gel cream texture to it. Although in the middle of December in Minnesota, I think the new version is going to be a bit more hydrating. So perhaps that might avoid a step of something other than just what I would use with the Moisture Surge original version. So although my skin didn't totally love it, it did get used to this. Uh, after using it for a couple weeks so uh, the first yeah the first couple weeks using it my skin was okay but I'd get a clogged pore here and there and then after that my skin seemed to adjust to it a little bit better so fall it's fall now so maybe fall is not the best time to start using it maybe I should wait until December when my skin is getting more dry and added in then but anyway fall is not super dry here like December is so um, anyway, so overall, I like the original version a little bit better, but they're both great. So anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try uh, either of these out or both of them and what your thoughts in comparison is. So uh, definitely leave a comment. I love hearing from you and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys.